<sighs> so in this video i'm going to be showing you guys how to calculate the maximum shear force but for us to be able to do so we need to calculate all the shear forces and for us to get there we also need to have calculated our reaction so that is the reactions on the reaction on the left hand side and also the right reaction and luckily enough for us i've already did videos where i calculated um, the reactions are from different question papers and then now i'm just following up uh, to continue the questions so this video is just focusing on calculating the shear forces because i kind of figured that uh with you guys you know it's kind of difficult to focus and if you see a video like 25 minutes or more you know 30 minutes it's very hard to focus and you know learn something so i decided to break the videos in pieces right so if you're watching videos from me for the first time please care to like share comment and subscribe and if you're already a subscriber please continue sharing the channel interacting with the videos comment you know um so that the channel grows uh, because um, I have promised guys that I will release videos on the centroids, uh, neutral axis, you know, on the centroids, basically, I will release those videos once I hit a hundred subscribers and the promise is going to be kept. Uh, you just have to trust me. So let's get to a hundred subscribers. Uh, please continue sharing uh, and help the channel grow. So guys, I'm going to be showing you how to get free marks when it comes to um, calculating the shear forces right i will do videos on calculating the bending moments and also sketching the graphs but i'm going to be doing them separately so uh, if you need a video uh, that is explaining how we got the reactions of this video here the link is in the corner don't miss out uh, if you don't understand please check that video out so guys enough with the chit chat uh, let's cut to the chase right so just allow me to zoom out a bit because I won't be zooming in and out uh, throughout the video. Okay, so I think this is fine. All right, so guys, in the first video uh, is where I explained a lot. So the first video on shear forces, right, uh, the link is also there. That is when I did a lot of talking about what you need to do when you have a beam as in you know when it's 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 uh it's the what do you do when you're calculating the shear forces and also uh, when you just have forces at different points so guys what i'm just going to do is to calculate the shear forces at point a so this one is kind of weird because it's not showing the marks so this would be point a um this would be point b this would be c and then this reaction here would be d and guys a b c d e I'm sure I'm not the only one that needs to, uh, you know, go back and do, say, the entire alphabet just to get to what comes after K or even G or something. Anyways, guys, we're not there. So what I'm going to do, guys, I'm just going to say shear force, right? Shear force on point A. Okay, shear force on point A. And I'm going to do this. As I said, all the forces that are going upwards will be positive, all the forces going downwards will be negative. So you can see that the shear force going on point A is the, the force on point A going upwards is the reaction RL, right? We calculated that in the previous video. So we'll say 17. Since it's going up, it's just going to be positive 17. So I'll say 17,4. Okay, let me just say 17,4 uh, kilonewtons. Yeah, oh yeah, and this one, guys, in the previous video uh, where I was uh, calculating the reactions, I said the answer was 26,6. It was my mistake. 123 divided by 5 is 24,6. I made a mistake there, guys. So uh, we have, uh, yeah, it's 17,4, right? 17,4, okay, I'm trying to write a 4 here. Okay, uh, sorry about this. Yes, 17,4 kilonewtons like this is there any other force on point a no guys there is no other force so i'll just write equal to uh 17,4 okay guys that's a four it's not a nine it's not a nine 17,4 kilonewtons like that and i need to move on now now i need to say shear force point a b because there's something between point a b these this beam over here guys so i'll say shear force point a b Okay, we say shear force point AB when there's a beam in, the, in between, as we can see there. Guys, now we have to take the answer from the previous question, um, from the previous uh, shear force, which was A. So we'll say 17,4 uh, kilonewtons. 
Now we need to subtract because the shear force uh, of this beam is always going down. The weight of the beam is going down. It's the weight. So it was 8. So we need to say 8 kilonewtons, right? So it's 8 kilonewtons times the length of the beam, which guys would be... Guys, this one here, we said to ignore it. In the previous video, I said that we should ignore it because it didn't make sense for them to say 3. The length of this is 3 and then put a 1 there. For what? Right? So we're just going to say times 3 over here. And if we can calculate that... Uh, we are going to get minus, right, it's minus 6,6, 6, I believe. Yes, it's minus 6,6 6 on my calculator here, right, uh, kilonewtons. So that's a minus. And we now move on to the following point, which is on point B. We can't say anything on point B, guys, because there's no other force that is acting downwards or acting upwards. So we can just skip that and we can go to C. So we'll just say shear force on point C. Right, shear force on point C, guys. We'll take the answer from the previous question, which is minus six. Okay, which was minus six. My goodness, minus six comma six kilonewtons, right? But we have twelve acting downwards, so we have to say minus twelve, right? Minus twelve kilonewtons, and guys, we get minus eighteen, minus eighteen comma six kilo newtons like that and we move on to the following uh, we don't have anything in between so we're just going to d so we'll say shear force on point d okay shear force on point d guys what we have on point d is the reaction going upwards which is the reaction right so we're just going to say minus you can say the reaction first or you can just take that force the minus 18 comma 6 kilonewtons Right, and you can say plus 24 because it's going upwards. So you can say plus 24 kilonewtons. Right, 24,6, sorry, 24,6 kilonewtons, like this. And guys, what you're supposed to get is um, you're supposed to get 6, right? Because, uh, yes, you're supposed to get 6. It'll be positive 6, so it should be 6 kilonewtons. And now you need to get the shear force on point E because there's nothing in between that. Uh, you're just going to say shear force on point E uh, is going to be 6, which was this one that you got, right? And then subtract the 6 that is going downwards. You just say minus 6 kilonewtons, as you can see. Okay, kilonewtons. 6 kilonewtons like this, guys. And your answer will be 0 kilonewtons, right? And that will be your final answer, but then you just need to find out which is which one is your maximum so guys this will be your maximum uh this 18 right so the 18 will be your maximum because it's the highest it doesn't matter even if it's negative this will be your maximum shear force okay that will be your maximum shear force so guys thank you guys for watching until we meet again in the next video don't forget to subscribe because uh you need the videos on centroids guys you need those videos and they're only coming out after i have reached a hundred subscribers thank you guys for watching until we meet again cheers